In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We are warm welcome to the celebration of this Holy Eucharist on this, the fifth Sunday after Trinity. We're experimenting with a different piece of software. Uh, we had some donations, so we've managed to pay some subscriptions for this. So uh, we, we hope that this will work better than what we've been using. So uh, it's a trial, so um, just, uh, just bear with us. If I can just ask you, please, before we begin, just to mute your microphones, and then I'll explain now just who's taking part today, because some people are phoning in and they won't be able to see who who's taking part. So Catherine's reading the first reading, Sarah's reading the psalm, Liz is reading the apostle, the epistle, Joe's reading the gospel, Father Mike is giving the homily, and the intercessions are led by Gladys. Some words of introduction. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by his Holy Spirit. Let us, let, put, let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God, our Redeemer. I'll lead you in the words of our general confession. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you for our own fault, in thought and word and deed, and in what we have left undone. We are heartily sorry and repent of all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're now going to hear the glory to the setting by Margaret Ritzer.
the, we pray the colic for the fifth Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer, which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name. Through our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Catherine's now going to read our Old Testament reading. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Genesis, chapter 25. These are the descendants of Isaac, Abraham's son. Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethel, the Aramean of Padam Aram sister of Laban the Aramean. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord granted his prayer, and his wife Rebekah conceived. The children struggled together within her, and she said, if it is to be this way, why do I live? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples born of you shall be divided. One shall be stronger than the other. The elder shall serve the younger. When her time to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle. So they named him Esau. Afterwards, his brother came out, with his hand gripping Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob. Isaac was sixty years old when she bore them. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man living in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he was fond of game but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once, when Jacob was cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field, and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stuff, for I am famished. Therefore he was called Edom. Jacob said, first sell me your birthright. Esau, I'm about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. This is the word of the Lord. Psalm 119, verses 105 to 112. The refrain is, O deal with your servant according to your faithful love. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and will fulfill it to keep your righteous judgments. I am troubled above measure. Give me life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept the free will offering of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your judgments. O oh, deal with your servant according to your faithful love. My soul is ever in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have laid a snare for me, 
but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your testimonies have I claimed as my heritage forever, for they are the very joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes, always, even to the end. O oh, deal with your servant according to your faithful love. This is now going to read our epistle from Romans chapter 8. And I did that muted. So I'm going to do it again so you can hear it. And I apologise. Here it goes. There is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and to deal with sin. He condemns sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on the things of the spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But if you are in the flesh, you are in the spirit, since the spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if in Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit of life because of righteousness. The spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who Jesus raised from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit that dwells in you. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Joe's now going to read our gospel reading from Matthew chapter 13. The Lord be with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the lake. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the crowds, while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the words of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for that that was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but who cares of the world 
and the cure of wealth chokes the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, in another thirty. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Father in Michael, name, lead us in our homily. Thank you, Mike. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. So how do you feel about the world starting up again? We can now go shopping. We can go to the pub. We can get our hair done, as I notice that some have already. Very nice. We'll even be able to go back to church next week if Father Andrew lets us in. Are you rubbing your hands with excitement or are you worried about it all? Quite happy with the sanctuary of home and scared of what lies beyond it. I suspect that most of us are a bit of both, glad, but more than a bit weary, wary. We're all having to make our own risk assessments, our own calculations about what matters and what we dare to do as families and households and governments all over the world are having to do. The danger, I guess, is that we all get paralysed by the fear of doing the wrong thing. When actually doing nothing is just what we can't afford to do, economically, physically and most of all emotionally. We just heard the parable of the sower which we know so well. And we can read it as it's so often explained to us that it's all about how to preach the gospel. But the original words of Jesus, the parable without the explanation, which was added later, might be saying something different. Jesus is talking about the risks that farmers take. They have to sow their seeds. But however careful they are, some seeds will end up on hard ground, on paths, in bushes, where they'll die. That's just life, Jesus is saying. But the sowing must happen. The risk has to be taken if new life is to appear. And of course the miracle is that it does, and it does so often. So it's a hopeful parable, a story that should help to free us. If we want certainty, security, safety, we won't find it here. But the sower's job and the task of each of our lives is to sow, to do things, to build relationships, to make a mark in the world around us. If we sit and wait for something to happen, then it probably won't. And if we do act, it won't always go well or how we planned it. We'll make mistakes. There'll be accidents and mishaps. That's just how it is. But so act, live, we must. And when everything doesn't go to plan, don't be surprised. Look at what happened to God's plans. Over and over again, they were wrecked. 
like the story of Esau and Jacob. The older twin should have been the carrier of God's promise, but no, as we've heard, it ends up being Jacob. God's plans constantly have had to be adjusted, mostly due to human incompetence, laziness or wickedness. So our plans might have to change quite often, no matter. There'll be wastage, there'll be pain and grief, but God's promise in Christ is to hold on to us, to redeem us, to carry us through it all. There's been a lot of speculation about how the world will have been changed by this virus. It feels like some deeply unconscious things have already been happening. The Black Lives Matter protests have driven the debate about racism much further and deeper. Hearing all that beautiful bird song instead of cars and aeroplanes has made the green agenda more real. The homeless were given homes. We've begun to value carers more. All sorts of things have been moving on. So maybe, just maybe, this could be one of God's Kairos moments. A time for us all to make decisions about how we want our world to be, our country, our city, our neighbourhood, our own lives. And not just by sharing wishy-washy hopes and dreams, but by starting real deep-seated conversations with friends, with neighbours, with strangers, with anyone who cares about how things could be and with a real recognition, recognition of what it will cost. These are such extraordinary times. Everybody's vulnerable and nothing certain. The big question is, will we dare take the risk? Many risks have already been taken during the lockdown. All the ordinary miracles of kindness and generosity, of forgiveness and selflessness that we've rightly been celebrating. But how badly our world needs all of that to continue, for the risks of love to go on being taken. In that old Christian aid adage, learning to live simply, that others may simply live. And the sower in Jesus' parable would say, yes, you have to. You have to go on taking those risks, because that's the only way things can begin again. And of course it won't be easy, it never is. It means facing grief, our own and the world's. Overcoming denial and fear, our own and the world's. And trusting that somehow in God, we will be held and redeemed and carried through. And yes, there'll always be false starts and lost trails and disappointments. It will always be a task that needs the greatest courage and faith and imagination. They are the greatest gifts we can have. But as God's people, the people of Christ's promise, 
they are what we have to urge the world around us to use at this moment. And if it all seems too big, too impossible, then remember those prophetic words of Barack Obama, who's simply echoing Jesus, the sower, the wisdom of the ages, and of course, Gandhi. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change we seek. Let's believe it. Amen. I lead you in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets, we believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sin. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gladys in a moment is going to lead us in our prayers. Just some words of introduction. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty and everlasting God, pour down your spirit upon your church and help us to pray. Father, you alone workest great marvels. Help us, your children, as we seek your blessing, especially leaders, the leaders of the universal church, our archbishops, bishops, vicars and priests, and curates, and all congregation committed to their church who are shepherding us in these very difficult times threatened by economic collapse and social despair brought about by the threat from coronavirus. Give them the healthful spirit of thy grace that they may truly please thee. Pour upon them the continued dew of thy blessing. Help them as they go out of their way to seek and serve the lost. We thank you for the opening of the churches so that we can congregate again and worship together. Not forgetting to thank you, Lord, for the technology that has expanded the horizons of your word during the lockdown times. And we pray that this will continue to help reach those who can no longer travel far from their homes due to circumstances and infirmities. Grant this, O oh Lord, for the honor of our advocate and mediator, Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O oh God, the creator and preserver of all, 
we pray for all people in every kind of need. Make your ways known on earth. Teach the leaders of all the nations to hunger and thirst for fairness and justice as they distribute the world resources so that every person you have created with your own hands is, access, is adequate access to the resources you have given to us, the human race on this earth. Give wisdom to the World Health Organization leaders and scientists who have been placed in position for a time such as this to execute their duties, asking the Holy Spirit to be guiding their every move. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for all people who, get, who gave all kinds, we have all kinds of needs. We remember the health workers who are working under difficult conditions. All those cries which fall on stony ground. For all who labor but whose fulfillment is frustrated. For all who are choked by the cares and riches of this world. We pray for those who have lost hope of growing or achieving anything as the economy is shrinking and employment is scarce, especially for new graduates who find themselves having to face this difficult situation at their infancy of job seeking. We also pray for those looking after the animals and natural resources of the world at this time so that they get your protection from unseen threats. Lord, in your Lord, we pray for our neighbors, families, and friends. Thank you, Lord, for the time lockdown gave some families to stay together. Help us to bring forth fruits of your spirit in our homes. May our homes be places where love, joy, and peace abound. May we nurture the young in the ways of truth and goodness. Lord, protect all who are not at peace with themselves or at peace with those around them. We pray for the lonely. May you give them peace that surpasses all, under that surpasses all understanding so that their loneliness does not drive them into despair. We also pray for the homeless who look in hope to have a home of their own. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for all who are in adversity, for, for all who are tempted to give up, and for all suffering from breakdown and are unable to cope on their own. We pray for the sick in body and mind and spirit. We pray especially for Jordan, for Helena, for Martin, for Dr. Sadiki, for John Powell, and for Nelson. Nelson is my brother who is not well in Zimbabwe. And all those on prayer cushion, and those people we've placed their names there, or we have sent their names to place today. Lord, set our minds on the spirit on life and on peace. We all seek protection from coronavirus. Keep us, good Lord, under the shadow of your mercy that we may find comfort knowing that nothing can separate us from your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We give thanks that you raised Christ from the dead and you will give life to our mortal bodies. We pray for all who are renewed and refreshed in your eternal kingdom. We remember especially the soul of Liz Angle and all our loved ones who recently passed on or whose anniversary falls on this week. We pray that one day we may share with them in that glory. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. We move into
into our time of sharing the peace together. Peace to you from God our Heavenly Father. Peace to you from his Son, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. Peace from the Holy Spirit, the life giver. The peace, the triune God, be always with you. Let us offer another a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. Father, we give you thanks and praise. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour, 
by the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh. As your son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us. And he revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the heart. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to be in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and James, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, 
we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you but only say the word, and I shall be healed. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, we beseech you, <coughs> that the course of this world may be so peaceably ordered by your governance, that your church may joyfully serve you in all godly quietness. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I'll lead you in our final prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. For him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. And I say a huge thank you to all those who took part today, for those who read and uh, led the prayers, and Father Mike for your homily as well. But to do nothing is not an option. So please go away with those thoughts. As we prepare next week to open our doors, um, 10 o'clock, um, I think we're there now, so uh, you're very welcome. You come in the, the, t the tower room entrance, so, uh, and there's... Um, a sink washing facility to wash your hands or to use the sanitizer, whatever you prefer when you come in. So 10 o'clock next Sunday here and in the week we're open as normal. Monday, well, as normal as we have been, Monday, Wednesday and Friday, 10 till 1. So we're keeping those times and a little bit earlier on Monday morning for the big issue sellers. They've been um, going for two weeks now uh, from the 6th of July, so it's good to have, have them back with us as well. And I say sorry to Lizzie, we, I think you were muted by mistake here, so, uh, but thank you for rereading the, uh, the epistle again. It was lovely. Thank you for your first time, and it's always a, always a concern, so thank you for persevering. It was very good. Thank you. A moment of quiet before I give God's blessing. The Lord be with you. God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, 
be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Philip's now going to play trumpet tune by John Stanley as our as our final volunteer. Thank you to Philip too, and to Philip on the technical side. So uh, it's a big change today. So thank you for persevering and for being with us. Have a good week, and we look forward to seeing you yeah, next week here in church at 10 o'clock. If you feel a bit reticent about coming to church, then the same will happen again next week. We'll still be broadcasting this, and we will be doing this, I think, as part of the future. So um, yes, it's the new normal. So. Uh, if you feel able to come, then it's lovely to have you. So have a really, have a really good week, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you very much.